Okay, can you factor this particular expression? That is the topic of this video. And if you can't, uh, just stick around. I will show you exactly what to do to factor an expression like this. It's absolutely critical that you know how to factor, especially if you're taking any course from, let's say, algebra or more advanced. Okay, factoring is just, it's probably one of the most critical skills. And you know, all the math skills you learn are critical, but boy, if I had to put an extra emphasis on anything, just knowing how to factor is probably would be at the top of the list for sure. So we're going to talk about factoring uh, in general very briefly and then obviously how to deal with an expression like this. But uh, first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe one of the most robust, comprehensive, video-based math help programs there uh, is. I'm going to leave a link to my math help program uh, in the description of this video. I have several different courses you could take from me directly, all video-based, extremely comprehensive, full lessons, and I solve thousands of problems with video-based solutions. But um, whether you need to take a full course or you're in a course right now and you need help with your course, uh, either way, my program can help. Also, if you've been following me uh, on YouTube, one, thank you if you have. If two, if you're not, hopefully you will be. But uh, I am a huge, huge um, a believer in note-taking just because of my decades of teaching mathematics. This, and I've seen the people who have the best notes have the best grades. So if you really want to learn this stuff, you got to look at your notes and ask yourself, are your notes you know, strong? Okay, Can you see them? Would you be proud to let somebody use your notes? Can somebody learn math by reading your notes? Your, your notes, you need to have the highest standards for your notes. Now, a lot of people struggle with note-taking, and uh, I did for sure. It's a skill that you need to uh, work on and get better at. But in the meantime, if you don't have strong notes, you certainly need notes. You need notes to study from. So I have notes. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to those notes in the description of this video. Uh, that would include pre-algebra. Okay, these are very comprehensive notes, by the way, too. Uh, so pre-algebra, algebra one, uh, geometry, algebra two, trigonometry for now. So if you don't have any notes or you're struggling with note-taking, you can pick up a pair of notes and then check out some of my YouTube videos on note-taking. Okay. So let's get into this problem. So the first thing is, what do you think this is? What are we dealing with, okay? Well, in algebra, uh, we would classify this expression as a polynomial, okay? So typically, uh, most of the expressions that, you, uh, that we uh, focus on you know, factoring in algebra in the beginning are polynomials, okay? So things like, let's say, 2x plus 10, Okay, if I said factor that, you hopefully you'll be like, oh, I can factor that. I can factor out the greatest common factor. That would be 2x plus 5. And that would be excellent, right? So looking at this, I'm like, oh, that's the greatest common factor. But x to the fourth minus 81, I'm like, yeah, yeah, there is no common factor. But is, you know, that means what? I can't factor this? No, that's not the case. You can factor this, but you need to know some rules, okay? So part of factoring, when you learn how to factor, like the greatest common factor, is some rules. So let's just quickly go through this here. We're going to talk about this guy here in a second. But what are the, some of the rules of factoring, okay? So kind of the factoring universe. Well, the first one is the greatest common factor. you got to know how to deal with the greatest common factor. I just gave you an example, something like this, 2x plus 10. Got to know, hey, okay, I can factor out the 2, like so. So in factoring, um, you got to uh, always look for opportunities to factor out the greatest common factor, okay? Now, once you're done with that, okay, then you have to look to see, hey, what is, what? what's left? What kind of polynomial um, is left after um, I factored a greatest common factor out. Now, you may not have a GCF to factor out, so you have to be able to identify what kind of polynomial, you know, you know you're being asked to um, uh, factor, okay? So typically at this level, I'm not going to make it overly complex, you might have a trinomial, okay? Trinomial, something like, say, this, x squared minus 6x plus, oh, I don't know, 8, Okay? So 
Now, I'm not saying that this particular trinomial could be factored, but you're going you're gonna to have to be able to assess and determine whether a trinomial, for example, could be factored, or you might be given a binomial like this, x squared minus 9, okay? So this is a binomial, okay? This is a trinomial. So now you got all these different kind of special cases. So that you can, you know, first of all, you have to learn how to deal with the GCF. Then you're going to say, okay, what, what's left, you know, because we want to look at the factors of what I was able to factor if I could factor out a GCF. So you really um, have to develop the skills of uh, working with trinomials and then all these kind of special cases, okay? So special case scenarios would include something like this, okay? And this is what we're going to be using in this particular problem. And this is an example of the difference of two squares. Now, there's other special case rules that you need to know. So this whole collective universe of factoring polynomials, okay, uh, GCF, trinomials, special case rules, you got to know all of this and look for opportunities when you're faced with something. Because you're going to be given a problem and you're going to say simplify, you know, whatever this might be. And it's not going to say, oh, use the, use this is a trinomial, do this, you know, you're going to have to have all these skills. But let's take a look at the difference of two squares and how we can apply it in a problem like this. Now, if you know this rule and you're like, oh, okay, I can, you know, I know how to do this problem, being that now you see it's a difference of two square situation. But let's just go ahead, uh, if you want to try it, pause the video and go ahead and do it. But a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b times a minus b. That's the rule. Okay, let's see, look at a real easy example. So how about we had um, uh, x squared minus 4. Okay, now first glance, obviously there's no GCF here, but what am I looking at? It's the difference of two squares. So it's one squared minus another squared. So here I have, obviously, x squared is a square of x, and 4 is the square of 2, okay? So when you're looking at these perfect squares, you can kind of think of, like, think of it like this, okay? 4, oh, that's 2 squared. So you have a difference of 2 squared. Now I'm just going to go ahead and follow the pattern. So it's going to be A plus B, okay? This would be my A, and this would be my B, okay? 2, right? X would be A, and 2 would be B, so this would be X plus 2, all right, times what? A minus B or X minus 2. Okay, now if you use the FOIL um, uh, procedure to go back and multiply, you'll get back to this as your final answer. Okay, so this is the difference of two squared. This comes up very, very frequently in uh, factoring. So if you um, are familiar with it, well, now you are. Okay, this is definitely one of those rules that you have to commit to your memory. I would say the factoring rules, there are some special cases like difference of uh, two cubed and, and whatnot. Uh, those, are, those are good and you need to know this, but this guy right here, the difference of two squared, this comes up all the time. Okay, so commit this to memory for sure. So this is just an illustration of how it works. Okay, all right. So hopefully you knew that. And if you, do, if you didn't, now you do. So we're going to use this rule here, okay? But now we're going to have to do a little bit of algebraic uh, manipulation, if you will, okay? I hate to use that word. We're not trying to manipulate anybody, but we're going to have to kind of like mess around with this problem so uh, we can kind of use this format. So I have x to the fourth and um, uh, 81, right? So I'm thinking, okay, well, how can I, you know, use a difference of two squares? I have the fourth here. Well, what we can do is write x to the fourth. I could write it as a squared, and the way I do that is this. I go x squared squared, okay? So x squared is acting as my x, okay, if you will, all right? So this thing here is being squared because x squared squared is x to the fourth, all right? So just as a quick reminder, okay, whatever this little outside exponent, if I multiply this, it's going to be x to the fourth, okay? All right, so now I'm thinking, boy, I would like to have this 81 as a squared as well. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, well, that's pretty easy. That's just going to be 9 squared, okay? So at this point, 
and we're like, oh, we got some good stuff going on here, right? So 9 squared, x squared squared. So this guy is acting as my A, and 9 is acting as my B, okay? So let's go ahead and write this uh, out. So A plus B is going to be not just x. It's going to be x squared. That's my A, okay? So my A is x squared, and my B is 9, okay? So this is going to be my A plus B is going to be x squared plus 9, okay, times x squared, right? This is, I'm doing this part now, minus 9, all right? And that's it, but not quite, not quite, okay? So you might say, boy, you know, I thought we're done. We almost are done, okay? Here's the deal with factoring. Uh, it's very uh, frequently the case that once you apply a rule in factoring, you need to uh, look to see if you can factor the factors, okay? So here, let's say we're going to factor something and, oh, we're able to factor something into two things, boop. You have to look at these factors and be like, hey, can I factor uh, this factor or this factor or both factors into uh, something else? That's very often the case, okay? So you have to look for opportunities that we can continue to factor. So, you know, let's look at these factors. X squared plus nine, no, I cannot factor that anymore, okay? But I have X squared minus nine. Hmm, hey, isn't that a difference of two squared? It, it definitely is, okay? So our final answer is gonna be X squared plus nine, we'll just write that here, X squared plus nine. But X squared minus nine, if I follow this rule again, is going to be X plus three, right? Because we're dealing with X squared minus nine squared, which is three squared, right? Times X minus three. And this would be my final answer, okay? All right, so just a real quick uh, uh, overview of factoring and how you know you need to know these rules. And sometimes the what you're trying to factor isn't gonna fit in nice and neatly into the rule, but if you kind of can manipulate things around, Okay, uh, using some substitution. Of course, this requires you to know like properties of exponents and all the different things that you've learned previously to when you studied factors. Okay, so again, math is cumulative, right? Uh, there is no, you know, particular chapter or skill that you're learning that you won't need in the future. Okay, uh, that's why you need to go have, you know, just to be a stickler again, good notes. Because let's say you're like, oh, how do I deal with the exponents again? Guess what? You flip back to your exponents section. You look at some examples. You're like, oh, okay, that's it. Or I forgot how to deal with positive and negative numbers. You flip back in your notes and you look, okay? Your notes are, you know, kind of your active, you know, reference sheet, okay? And they got to be really nice and neat and organized so you can actually use them. It's not just a process. And a lot of uh, teachers, too, um, use notes, the quality of your notes, uh, in terms of your final grade as well. So if note taking, if you're in a class and you're, and you're, you're you know, part of your, you know, final uh, grade is going to be, let's say test. Okay. is going to count for some percentage and then your quizzes and then your homework. Oftentimes your notes, teachers will give you, I don't know, five, 10% on top of the final exam. Why would they incentivize your notes? Because they know how important note taking is. Okay. So this is just a little bit of uh, a look into the big world of factoring. There's, of course, other things you need to uh, study uh, with factoring. Now, uh, let me go ahead and, and emphasize something. None of this is going to stick unless you practice factoring. So um, how do you do that? Well, of course, you have your own homework and whatnot you need to be doing if you're taking a math class. But I also have um, a lot of other videos on my channel about factoring. You can check those out. And... Um, Again, you know, if you don't practice this stuff, it's not going to stick. But factoring is critical. Definitely got to know how to do it. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.